guys doing out here? Ah. This car, we don't really know where it's gonna be at full weight yet, just because we've cut so much out of it. We're putting a lot of new weight and other weight into the car as far as the build goes with a bigger radiator. We're moving that to the rear. We're going to the winner's quick change differential. It's a bit heavier than the factory 240 differential. We're going to a G-Force four-speed dog box. RB is already a pretty heavy, stout motor, but we know with being able to do the radiator in the back, I can kind of balance a lot of the front heaviness that the S13 had out a little more to the rear on the S14. Usually if you get a car that's really heavy in the rear, when you go to transition, you get the weight in the rear swinging around, it wants to just keep going. So my last year's car was actually really light in the rear, so it was kind of pivoting on the front wheel axis and was kind of easy to maintain and it didn't really like to come around too much. But with having the car, a little more weight all the way around. It should be a lot smoother for transitions and all that. So this car is gonna have a bit more weight in the rear, but I think it's gonna be more balanced. So I don't think I'm gonna to be too much of a shock with the car through transitions. I don't think it's gonna try and carry weight or carry the momentum to keep wanting to just 360 out. Mounting some of the parts in the interior, we're moving locations a little bit to offset out my weight versus weight in the car. So we're gonna try and relocate location of the battery, nitrous bottle, as well as the fire suppression system. And then body paneling is the biggest thing that's changing. So doors, side skirts, rear bumper, fenders, all that stuff is gonna be completely different. Being that we're going to a 14 chassis this year, it's not too far from an S13. So about 90% of the parts off my car are actually gonna be swapped over to the S14. Parts like the rear suspension arms, I mean our fuel parts, our fire suppression system, all that type of stuff is actually gonna swap over. So that's gonna save us a bit of money there at that point to just be able to swap over, like I said, 90% of the added parts to the chassis over to the new car. The last car I got, uh, the S13 was also right-hand drive which I initially bought for practice for another car. I wanted more right-hand drive practice in a car because I'd only driven it for drifting maybe three times. So we built the S13 uh, for my Pro-Am season, which was the Three Palms Drift. It was kind of a uh, a last minute build because I initially bought it for a practice car and then it ended up turning into let's go competitively drive it. After uh, Pro-Am season and my first year of Pro season on the S13 right hand drive I've actually become comfortable with it and I kind of almost prefer it now for the drifting aspect to be on that side. So we figured on this car, uh, you know, I, I felt more comfortable with it, so I asked Bub, let's do the conversion to this car as well. Um, so the old chassis is sitting out back and it's kind of just stripped of all its good pieces, parts, and now we're coming at it with a grinder to cut out pieces from the firewall to swap over to do the right-hand drive conversion. We've got about 12 or 13 stops this year that we have planned. The four are going to be the FD Pro 2 rounds, and then the rest are going to be grassroots events slash like demos slash like festival events, I guess you could say, and go interact with a lot of the grassroots side of the sport. So a lot of you know the stops we have are somewhere in the Midwest, um, some are up the East Coast to where some of the kids I'm sure have probably gone to either the Jersey event or the Atlanta event, but some may have not. So this, we're kind of bringing the, the pro cars out to the grassroots uh, so the kids can actually see the cars, you know, interact and hang out with us, ask us questions. That way they can see how well their cars perform, trying to either keep up or outrun a pro car, as well as, you know, getting ride-alongs and feeling how, you know, how much traction and how much grip is actually built into the, the pro drift cars. Now I have a way more tunable setup with having the winner's quick change. I can change gears to dial it in per track, per event, per tarmac condition, wet, dry, whatever I wanted to do, we can have a gear set for it. So that's going to be uh, probably one of the, 
the coolest things to really actually get used to is to go, I need just a little bit more wheel speed and actually being able to just go, okay, well, it'll only take me a minute or two to change the gear. So that's gonna be fun to actually have that to dial in. So last year's motor, after the finals and after our stop in New Orleans, uh, the motor has got some abuse on it from the season, so we figured we'd pull it apart, check everything out, and probably do a rebuild on it. Upon pulling it apart, uh, we noticed there was actually a few cracks in the block. The RVs are kind of known for having some cracks between coolant passages to the head stud threading on the block inside itself. We noticed all the cracks in it, and at that point, pretty much just kind of have to write off the block. 